Let's face it, no matter how much the game moves out to the three-point line, raw strength is, was, and always will be an asset in the NBA. There were plenty of exceptionally strong players in the league over the past years, and there are some standouts in today's game as well. With all the top-of-the-line resources and the best strength and conditioning coaches available, any NBA player who is willing to work hard can pack on some serious muscle. However, we're not interested in your regular strong NBA player right now. The NBA players we'll be looking at today were universally feared throughout the NBA for their strength and physical toughness. A couple of them have even changed the way the game is played. Welcome to NBA Zone and our countdown to the top 10 strongest NBA players in NBA history. But before we get to the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notifications bell so that you don't miss out on all of our latest content. At number 10, we have Charles Barkley. Younger audiences mostly know Charles Barkley as a fun and good-natured TV analyst from TNT's acclaimed show, Inside the NBA. Back in his day, however, Barkley was a physical beast on the court, despite being listed as just 6'6", and probably being closer to 6'4 in reality. Everyone in the league knew this about Barkley. You don't want to piss him off, because he will go at you, and he isn't afraid of anyone. The best example of this was a fight with Bill Lambeer, the feared center of the Bad Boy Pistons, where Barkley made him regret some of his life choices. When someone can dunk with so much power that the entire basket gets moved by about a foot, as Barkley did on his 22nd birthday, that should tell you all you need to know about how strong they are. Barkley gets in the left. Lane Beer will come back with an uppercut. Lane Beer, who's had that mouse under his eye for most of the season, also had a cut. Both benches empty. It went on for five minutes. The fans also got involved in it. Number nine, Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley was regarded as probably the most dangerous man in the NBA during his playing career. He was both respected and feared by his peers because of his toughness. And he was even Michael Jordan's bodyguard while the two played on the Bulls. When Oakley was traded to the Knicks, he and Patrick Ewing formed one of the most formidable defensive lines in basketball, known as the No Layup Knicks. The stories of his strength and on-off court fights are things of NBA legends and separating the fact from fiction can be borderline impossible. According to one story, he took on five security guards by himself during an eventful visit to a nightclub with Jordan one night. According to another, he slapped Charles Barkley during a 1999 Players Union meeting, and Barkley didn't even retaliate. Whatever the truth may be, there is no denying that Oakley was a unique force in NBA history. At number eight, we have Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson was an absolute beast in college, which prompted the Hornets to take him with the first overall pick back in 1991. A healthy Larry Johnson was an unstoppable force on the court and dunking over anyone and everyone foolish enough to stand in his way. Even LeBron James was so impressed with Johnson's raw strength that he shared a mixtape of his highlights with the caption, my goodness, a straight up animal man, grandma ma. The latter part was referring to Johnson's alter ego for a series of Converse commercials. Unfortunately, a healthy Larry Johnson was also a kind of a rarity. He was never able to regain his all-star form after herniating a disc in his back and we never really got to see what could have been. He never got over his back issues either, and they ultimately forced him to call it a career after just 10 years in the league. She's the man. Number seven, Alonzo Mourning. Alonzo Mourning is one of a long list of standout centers to come out of Georgetown. Not only was he unusually tall and very strong as a kid, but he also trained relentlessly. Zoe went to Georgetown, where he formed the most intimidating rim defending duo in college basketball. Alongside Dikembe Mutombo, opponents quickly learned that there was just no way you could outmuscle Zoe. His strength translated to the NBA, where he spent some time playing with Larry Johnson in Charlotte. Yes, that Larry Johnson. Unfortunately, the two never saw eye to eye, and Mourning eventually moved on from Charlotte. His career and his life were both nearly cut short when he was diagnosed with an incurable kidney disease that required a transplant. After an outpouring of support, they found a compatible donor, but doctors predicted he would never play again. Despite all odds, Zoe made a successful comeback and even became an NBA champion in 2006. Without a kidney transplant, I would never play basketball again. But I did get a transplant, thanks to my living donor. So now it's not just basketball fans that know me, my kids know me too. At number six, we have Daryl Dawkins. Believe it or not, there was a time when breakaway rims were not used in the NBA. The late Daryl Dawkins is the reason why that changed. Dawkins was the first player to join the NBA straight out of high school and was known for his strength and powerful dunks. Despite this reputation, nobody expected him to do what he did in a game against the Kansas City Kings in 1979. During that game, Dawkins dunked the ball with so much power that he not only shattered the glass backboard, but also bent the basket support pole. This has never 
happened before in the NBA. Fans stormed the court and started picking up pieces of the shattered backboard as souvenirs. Later that same year, Dawkins destroyed another basket, and the NBA finally decided to start using breakaway rims. Number 5. Ben Wallace We're getting into familiar territory now. Big Ben was, ironically, a very undersized center at 6'9". Even that was generous, because the man himself admitted he was really around 6'7". What he lacked up in height, he made up for in pure, natural strength. His playing weight was around 240 pounds, with an unreal body fat percentage of just 3%. As it turns out, when you combine that kind of natural ability with an addiction to weight training, you get something really special. How special? The winning a championship and four defensive player of the year awards after going undrafted. Kind of special. Very few players were ever foolish enough to challenge him, and when Ron Artest tried in 2004, it resulted in one of the biggest all-out brawls in NBA history. Malice at the Palace. Ben Wallace is fouled, and Wallace did- Oh, Wallace! Right at Artest! This has potential to be serious if they don't get between. Now Artest has jumped over the scorer's table and is trying to get down to the bench! Number 4. Carl Malone A single glance at Carl Malone during his playing days would immediately tell you he is not someone you want to mess with. Even in an era where exceptionally strong players were more common than ever, the mailman was still a standout. In 1997, 17 strength and conditioning coaches from the NBA were asked who the strongest player in the league was. Yep, you probably guessed it. They picked Malone. This didn't come as a huge surprise since the dude could bench around 400 pounds. He is one of those rare players that have an ungodly amount of natural strength and an insatiable appetite for training. Even when he wasn't training or player, as rare as that was, he would still find something to do that would physically challenge him. Growing up on a farm in Louisiana means he had no shortage of opportunities for hard labor. Given how he looks more than a decade after retirement, he could probably give some active players a run for their money. Number 3. Shaquille O'Neal Okay, you're probably wondering how the hell Shaq can be as low as number 3. There's no way there were two players stronger than this guy in NBA history, right? Well, more on that soon enough. What can you say about a man that destroyed more NBA backboards than probably anyone else in NBA history. Everyone knew he could be physically dominant, even before he was drafted first overall by the Magic back in 1992, and everyone was right. The Diesel got a PhD in education after retiring, but I like to think he had a PhD in bullying opposing centers long before that. He made NBA centers look like high school players nearly every time he stepped on the court, and the guys who could actually slow him down could be counted on the fingers on one hand. He just got overpowered by Shaquille O'Neal. I've watched the power. He just overpowers him and he comes down and then he shoves him right there. Number two, Artis Gilmore. If this is the first time you've ever heard of Artis Gilmore, I can't really blame you. He's not really that well known despite his list of basketball achievements being long enough for a video of its own. Gilmore started his career in the ABA and he was dominant enough to win the Rookie of the Year award and the MVP award in the same year. He continued his dominance in the NBA after the merger and almost everyone who played with him or against him is in agreement that he is the strongest player they've ever seen. Let me give you a quick example of just what this guy could do. You've probably seen Kareem Skyhook that iconic shot that helped him become the leading scorer in NBA history, Gilmore could block that and then he could push Kareem around on the other end using just one arm. Think of his placement here as 1B rather than 2, because that's what he deserves. Number 1. Wilt Chamberlain Some of you have probably seen this coming. There are more myths and urban legends about the life of the man who scored 100 points in a single game than any other player in NBA history. However, Wilt's otherworldly level of strength is undeniable. It is unfortunate that all of those feats attributed to him happens in a time before great TV coverage or social media. Here are some of the best stories about his level of dominance. And let me warn you right now, some of these sound crazy. One story claims that he could dunk with so much power that the ball once broke the toe of a player it hit. Another claims that he once dunked with John Havlicek hanging on to him. He could apparently pick people up and move them around at will. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger said he is the strongest person he ever saw. There are many more stories, but when the Terminator himself calls you the strongest he's ever seen, there's really nothing else to add. He came to the gym and he would do a tricep extension that like the big guys, the strongest guys would do, let's say, 120 pounds, let's say. He would come and he would do 150, 170 pounds. That's all we have for you today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you all for watching. Let us know in the comments down who you think was the strongest player in NBA history. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on all of our latest content. See you next time.